Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will learn how to automate multiple test cases of the login page. As you all know, login page is one of the important component of the website. It is pivotal in ensuring user security and overall website performance. Let's now learn about the website and the tools used in this video for demo. We will be using the Lambda test e-commerce website for automating the multiple login test scenarios. And uh, the tools used will be Selenium WebDriver with Java. We will be running the test on the Chrome browser and using TestNG. Explicitly, we will be using data provider annotation of TestNG to pass on the login credentials in the test. Now let's talk about the test scenarios that we will be automating. So first of all, we will be navigating to this login page and then allocating the email address, the password field and the login button. We will be automating three different scenarios of this login page. First scenario will be to enter a valid email. Let me show that to you manually. David.thompson at gmail.com and we will enter an invalid password. Let's, let's enter an ABCD kind of a value in the password field and click on login. So the first case will be to enter a valid email address and an invalid password and then verify this message. Warning, no match for email address and or password. The next case would be to enter a valid email address and then, and then leave the password field blank and click on login. So again, it will show the same message. We will again verify the message has been displayed. Uh, this is to ensure this negative scenarios actually ensure that the uh, login feature is actually working fine and we have a respective message displayed in case if the login does not happen in the website. Finally, on the third scenario, it will be a positive scenario and we will verify by entering a username that is uh, by entering an email address that is valid and entering a valid password as well and then click on login button. So once the login is successful, it should be taken to the my account page and we will verify that this my account text is displayed after the login is successful. So let's now move on to the code. And uh, before I just move on to the uh, code walkthrough, let me first give you a small demo around the project structure as well as the libraries used. So I, like I said, we will be using Selenium WebDriver with Java and TestNG. So you see, you can see the dependencies, Selenium, Java and TestNG updated here and uh, the version for Selenium, the, that is the latest version 4.21.0 and for TestNG 7.10.2. I have created a new package called login test demo. Inside that I have created a new package that is pages and I've created a new class called login page. Now this login page, we will be following a page object model. That is the reason why I've created a separate class for the page objects. The login page class will ideally uh, have all the web elements as well as the logic for performing the logging. And let me take you to the page again. And let me just uh, log out of this web page and again open the login page. So like I said, there are three fields here. So let's uh, locate the email address field first. And you can see email address field has this ID input hyphen email. This can be used to locate the uh, email address field like you said like you can see here private web, web element email address field driver dot find element by dot input hyphen email so this will eventually locate the email address field similarly for the password field we have an id input hyphen password the same can be used in the password field method as well and it will return the web element for the password field and finally the login button so you can see there is an input tag here and the class name is .btn. So uh, we can make use of this input tag and this button class, uh, the name of the class that is btn. So by using CSS selector, we can locate the login button. Input hyphen btn is the CSS selector that will be used to locate the login button. Once all of these three elements are located on the page, we can use them in the perform login method. This method takes two parameter email and password these are this will be eventually uh, these parameters will eventually be replaced by the actual value for the username and the password and uh, that will help in performing the login so first of all this perform login method will clear the email address field this is done to ensure that uh, the existing value that is been typed in the email address or the password field actually gets cleared so we have a blank field and we can take uh, try out with all the scenarios that we want to test so email address field will be cleared first, then 
using the send keys method, we'll supply the email value. And similarly, for the password key field will be cleared and then we'll supply the password value. And finally, the login button will be clicked. Now, as you click on this login button, there are two uh, conditions that can happen. One, if the password uh, or the email address is not valid, then in that case, uh, a message will be displayed, a warning message. Let me get that message again. Let me type in any value out there because anyways, it's an invalid case. And you can see there is a message coming here. Warning, no match for email address and or password. And we can just uh, check out for the selector. You can see there is a ID account hyphen login. Inside that, there is a class alert. This can be used to locate this uh, particular web element and finally get the text out of it. So hash account hyphen login and then div dot alert. Hash refers to this ID, hash account hyphen login and then div dot alert. Div dot alert dot is ideally a shorthand for the class name, and that is why it has been used in this CSS selector. And finally, this will return a string by checking out the text. So this selector will be located first, and then it will return the text out of it in the string format. So this get error message text ideally should return this text. Warning, no match for email address and or password. And the second condition is if this uh, login is successful, let me log in successfully thompson at gmail.com and then login so once this login is successful we'll have this a uh, my account page getting loaded and we will verify this uh, my account text is displayed so uh, for this i have created another page my account page and in this page we have this title get page title, this method that actually returns the text in the string format. So you can see there is an ID called content. Inside that we have a H2 tag. So ideally a CSS selector hash content space H2 can be used to get the text of this uh, field, uh, this particular web element, my account. You can see there are two extra, there is one extra constructor that is updated. This is done for the page object uh, model. The web driver interface is being initialized in the uh, login page constructor similarly the same constructor is applied in uh, my account page as well and final value for this web driver uh, uh, object will be supplied through the base test so in the base test you can see there is a before test annotation that has a set setup method uh, this method will eventually uh, start the chrome drive chrome browser and then maximize the window and apply the implicit weight of 30 seconds. This is done to ensure that we have the page loaded correctly before we perform the uh, login test scenarios. And there is an after test annotation as well, which will eventually quit the driver gracefully. Let's now move on to the test. If you uh, check out the test, there is a new class created that is called as login page test and that extends the base test. So. Once the base test is extended, you can use reuse all the variables that are available in the base test method uh, that can be used here. Uh, first of all, we will create a bit data provider. This data provider annotation is applied on the get login data. This method will eventually return the data in the iterator format as an object array. So you can see there is a get uh, login data array list created, which is ideally a list of object arrays. And inside that, there are different data sets that are being supplied. So the first data is uh, having a valid email, but an invalid password. You can see the third parameter being supplied here, false true. This is ideally to check if it is a valid test case or an invalid test case. So this Boolean false or true will determine if the valid if the test case is valid or invalid false refers to invalid test case and true refers to valid test case the second test set of data that we have is uh, having the password field blank that that is again a negative scenario hence the false uh, parameter is been updated and finally for the valid scenario which has a valid username and valid password the password is secret at the rate one two three the value for the boolean is is valid user is supplied as true which means this is a valid uh, uh, valid test uh, test data and ideally the my account scenario condition will be checked there 
So let's move on to the test. Now, before we move on to the test, one, one thing to note here is for supplying the data provider in the test, we need to have this data provider parameters and the name of that uh, method being supplied in the at the rate test annotation. And then we have the test method finally created test login feature, which will eventually uh, consume three parameters. First one is email. The second one is password. And third one is the is valid user. So the test will first navigate to the login page and then the login page class will be instantiated where the perform login email uh, and password with the parameters. This method will be called. Once the login is done, then the condition will be checked. If it is not a valid user, then the assertions will be performed to check that the warning message is displayed correctly. In case, if it is a valid case, if it is not a valid case, then this method assert equals will be applied. If it is a valid case, then my account page class will be instantiated and ideally the get page title method will be called, which will check if there is the uh, text my account displayed on the page. So let me quickly run this test and see how this performs in the automation. So you can see the setup method being executed first as it is uh, at it as it has the before test annotation mentioned over it. So the test is navigating to the login page now. And you can see the invalid test being executed. And finally, the valid test. And we should wait till the My Account page loads. And finally, the third test executed successfully. And we can see that uh, all the three scenarios executed successfully in a single go with the 20, within 26 seconds. 26 seconds, 459 milliseconds. So this is how you can automate different test scenarios using this data provider. We have an example of login test scenarios uh, being used. If there are more scenarios that you can test, you can just add up the scenarios by copy pasting this line. And then whatever, if you want to test with the blank username or blank password, then you can put it the same way here. But ideally, make sure that whatever scenarios that you put, if it is a valid invalid scenario, you need to put it above the true. The, the valid scenario should be tested in the last, ideally. Uh, this will help up in testing the other scenarios that are related to uh, login, which requires login. So if the login uh, scenarios uh, gets executed successfully, then the next scenario after login can be performed. So this is how you can test uh, the different login scenarios easily using Selenium WebDriver and TestNG. Uh, explicitly using the data provider on annotation. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new with, from this video. Do like, share and comment and do share it with your network as well. Thank you.